One thing that significantly characterises my travels, my interactions with wildlife, from the horny wild stag in Scotland to the wild boar the size of ponies in Switzerland and France. Next, I'm heading to where bears and wolves live, and frankly, I'm a little worried. <laughs> How do you deal with bears and wolves when you're wild camping? Well, there's plenty of advice available, and a lot of it is a pain in the backside. Hanging your food from a tree, food and toiletries, because toiletries smell too, 100 yards downwind of your camp, is a popular recommendation. But what an inconvenience that is. I mean, sure, I'll do it because I don't want to get eaten, and I'll likely make a spear every night when I'm setting up camp and set a large fire. But it sounds like it's certainly going to cut into the fun of touring these areas. I mean, right now, when a twig snaps at the, in the night and wakes me up, I can tell by the footfall whether it's a badger or a fox or a deer. So what I usually do, I just shout profanities at it until it goes away. Then I roll over and fall back to, back to sleep. But when, when there's wolves and bears around and a twig snaps near your tent, that's time to get up, make a lot of noise, put your shoes on, strap on your headlight and prepare to, prepare to fight to the death which kind of takes a bit of the relaxation out of recreation. There's a famous Irish travel writer called Dervla Murphy, who wrote a book about cycling from Ireland to India in the six, early 60s. She was going through Bulgaria during the winter and it was too icy to ride, so she got a, a lift with her in a small truck. Uh, which, happened, which slid on the ice and crashed. Well, the driver was too dazed and disoriented. So Murphy took to a forest track in the dark to walk the two miles to the nearest village to get help. Suddenly a dark shape careered into her back, almost knocking her over. It bit down on her shoulder and hung there, trying to drag her down. Another grabbed her trouser leg, while a third watched on, likely waiting for its own opportunity to attack. Luckily, she had a pistol, so she managed to get her gloves off, pull it out, and shot the one hanging off her, her jacket through the skull. Then shot the other one that was worrying her trouser leg. The third one scarpered. She thought there were small wolves looking to be on the, on the edge of starvation, but the authorities said they were more likely wild dogs. I don't care much how they're classified. Any four-legged tube with teeth at one end it's something I want to avoid. There, right there. Yeah, let's just make a little bit of noise and let her know that somebody's here. Hey, Mom. I mean, we're just like, you don't really know what hey. to say. Like, you can speak in tongues. You're just trying to make noise so the bear don't come. The bear don't care about any of this at all. And I can hear this thing woofing and barking. Woof, woof, woof. Hear it barking at us? Yeah. Hey, Mom. Take your kids and go. It's here. Hey, Mom! She just came through this gap. She's coming this way. She comes around a tree. We chamber around. Hey, Mom! Hey, Mom! Hey! Callahan hey. is shooting out in front of her. And she doesn't care at all. I will shoot. I will, I'm going to kill this get out, get sow. Out, get out, get out. And she spun. Uh, she says, Smell us now, lady. That's the sentence that comes to Callahan's mind the minute a grizzly bear changes his mind, decides not to maul him. European gun laws tend to be much more strict than they are in the USA. So while a pistol would be perfect, dealing with the officialdom to acquire one and the paperwork rigmarole of crossing each border would likely end up with a perforated customs office and multiple life sentences. <laughs> so I think I'm slowly starting to realize I can't be completely safe, but I can stack the odds in my favor, hence the all night fire and spear idea. What amuses me though, is the concern my friends and family express about the possibility of me getting kidnapped or murdered. As if gangs of highly trained psychopaths roam the woods at night, hoping on the off chance to stumble across a wild camping bicycle tourist. And as for that, when it comes to being in the woods, if there's no bears or wolves around, maybe moose and elk as well, I'm probably the most dangerous thing in there. I think you're far more likely to be attacked in a town even if you're locked in your own house, then I am in the wilderness in a tent because you're where people are and they know you're there 
And even then, the vast majority of people are extremely nice. The overwhelming percentage are friendly and generous. This is because human beings, as a general rule, are naturally cooperative and only superficially competitive. It's our very nature to help each other. I think the perception of lay people gets skewed by overexposure to news outlets and especially the grossly inaccurate alarmism of religious teachers and law and order politicians mischaracterizing human behavior because their jobs rely on keeping you frightened. It's far better to look to the scientists who actually empirically study this stuff, psychologists and anthropologists, for an actual accurate read on the human condition. Don't be scared, homie. People are nice. That's it for today, folks. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and smash that notification button too. See you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.